Hey everybody, it's Professor Hanks, and today we will be covering a video that goes over working with integers and floating points, and it's getting us to the point where we can start doing numerical operations and developing algorithms in Python. And uh, that's going to be really cool, and we'll be able to, we're going to be able to do that. So we need to keep working on our fundamentals, and I keep uh, I encourage you, I guess, to follow along with the video. So launch the video, launch your Spider interactive development environment, and start just coding with me. And you can see the mistakes that I make, and you can make them, and then track down the errors and get everything to work. And I think it's going to be the fastest way to, for you to learn uh, Python and get up to speed quickly. And all these videos build upon each other, so I encourage you to go through them interactively and just follow along. So here's our second follow along video working with ints, ints and floating points. And those are real important concepts in programming languages. So let me just start out and do something real simple and say, let's assign a variable called num1 equal to 2. And then let's print that out and let's talk about num1. So num1, real clear. num1 is equal to, we can see that's the output. And then if I was to say, well, what is the type of this? And this type is a built-in function. And it tells you whether it's a string or if it's an int or a floating point. We talked about strings in our first video. In this case, we can see that num2 is actually an int. So if I change this and I called, I made two into a string by using quotes, we can see that the output is now a string. And in fact, if I change two to two, 2.43 and output num1. And whoops, that's now a float. We can see that it's a floating point. Floating point just means it has a decimal place in it right there. And so let's uh, output the value for, for num1. We'll remove the type and we can see now it's 2.43. So let's do a few things and talk about uh, how uh, arithmetic operations are executed within Python and what order. It's called the order. Uh, of operator precedence, and I've got a little snippet of remarks or comments that I'm going to use to help remind us here. And so let me just put that in there. And I'm going to do something simple. I'm going to say x equals to 3 and y equals to 2. And then inside my print statement, I'm going to do some of these operations. So x plus y, just to check that this works, we can see that we're outputting 5. Plus is pretty straightforward. Subtraction, the, the multiply operator is an asterisk. You probably know that uh, by just working with Excel and other programming languages, potentially what's a little bit different. Um, and, and here's a division, what's a little bit maybe new to you is something called a floor division. And that's two back backslashes. And we can see that three divided by two gives a four, which is the, the closest whole number. So if I did three divided by five, we would get the rounded down to the to the lowest whole number. So 3 divided by 5 is 0 0.6, and that would be 0, would be the, the lowest whole number there. And if we change this to 2, uh, or let's do 4, it's still 0. So now, if we did uh, 3 divided by 2 with the floor operation, you can see that that's going to be 1. Now, there's uh, something that's a little bit uh, different in Python, if you're coming from other programming languages, that the exponent is the double asterisk, or to multiply sign. So x is 3 to the second power in this case. We can see that that's going to be 9 as the output over here. Uh, and then uh, you may not be familiar with the modulus uh, operator, but what it does is gives the remainder. So if we did x modulus y, uh, y 3 modulus 2, that would give us a 1 remainder. Now if 2, or let's do something a little bit more interesting, let's say 6, Modulus 2, the remainder is 0. So you can quickly tell if you have a uh, even or odd number by using the modulus. So that's a little bit of a review of the, the, the arithmetic operators. What we want to really talk about here is the order of operation. If you're writing code and you're working with algorithms and, algorithms and equations, you're going to want to use some very precise uh, coding, and you should know the order of operations and the precedence. And so I've listed them out here. So any code, any numbers inside of parentheses will be executed first, then the exponents, and then plus division, floor division, modulus, and then finally plus and equal. So if we were to do an operation like this, let's do something real simple. We'll say print three times two plus one for multiply is done first, and then plus one, so the output should be seven. Uh, so it's not 2 plus 1 first, which would be 3, times 3, which would be 9. So that clearly from shows that the plus operator is done before, excuse me, the 
multiply operator is done before the plus operator. So uh, if we wanted to do three times two plus one, which would be nine, right now we have seven as the output, we could use the parentheses to order the execution. And so this can get you know, more complex, but I encourage you to use parentheses to make your coding clear to you and anybody that's running or reading your code. So let's take this one. So let's do this in our heads first. Order of execution, we've got parentheses. So there's parentheses is first, so that's four. And we're gonna take the next thing is uh, to the exponent. And so three to the fourth power, let's make this simple. Let's say two plus one. So three is inside the parentheses. Three to the power of three would be 27. And then we wanna multiply that by four and then divide that by three. So 27 divided by three is nine. So the answer here should be 36. So we can see that the output on our console was 36. Okay, uh, bottom line, uh, it, you can be very efficient in writing your code if you know the uh, order of operator precedence, uh, but I encourage you to use parentheses to make um, reading of your code very clear. Let's show a common thing to inside of Python programs called the increment incrementer. And this is just a shorthand way to be able to add numbers together. So in, often you'll be able to, you want to add one to a number, let's say num equal num plus one. And this could be, you're just counting an index or tracking a number in your code. There's a real simple way to do this. And if we print this out and I need to assign one to a value, let's say num equals two, and we print this out real clear that that's gonna be three. Now. We can, we can also just say plus equals num, and we should get the same answer. Well, if we add, we start with two, add one to two, and then add one more to, to, to uh, num, then we should have four as the output here. So this num plus equals one is all it does is add one to the, to the variable num. Now you can, you can see that we've added, uh, if we started with, uh, two and we add one to that, then the output is three. Uh, the same concept applies to other operators. So if I wanted to do plus equals 10, so the output here would be 20. So it's just a shorthand way to add one, or in this case, to multiply by 10, uh, a specific variable, instead of writing it out in a longer way. Um, there are a lot of numeric built-in operations. A couple that you should be aware of is, for example, if I set num, let's just use this code up here, let's say num equal 2.3 and uh, or negative 2.3 and I wanted to take the absolute value of that. Um, I could show how that operation runs and I forgot a parenthesis so code told me that so let me output the value here so we can see that we took the absolute value of that and then one that I commonly use so I don't have to see all the trailing digits and a value is to say uh, round that value. Now, if I do round here, it's only gonna give me the output of the whole number. And what I often like to do is say round to two or three digits and say round to three digits. And I could say 2.3.45, and we rounded that and show the output. We can see 3.45, probably more meaningful. If I do six, seven, eight, and I'll put that, and then it rounded up to three point. 0.346 is the trailing decimal place. So those are um, some quick ways, quick built-in functions um, that you can use. So the next thing I'd like to show is um, the concept of comparators. And I'm going to just copy this over as, uh, let's see, I changed my file there a little bit. So let me copy this from my snippets over and use that as a guideline. And we really don't need this. So we'll just remove this and make this a little bit simpler. So once again, if we said x is equal to 3, and we're assigning x and y here, and then if I said print x equal y in this case, now notice that I used the double equal sign, and that means to do a comparison, and it will output a true or false. So if we come over here, we can see that we output a false. And this is actually a Boolean type, uh, data type called Boolean. And if uh, we did a, um, a type on 
the value false, we can see that we can it has a, a type called bool and only has two values of true or false. Uh, that's what a boolean is, a true or false value. Uh, so some of these operations here of three not equal to two, what would we expect? We would, that which would be a true value, and three is not equal to two. Three is greater than two, sure. We expect a true output. Three less than or equal to two is, some, you know, the, the syntax here to say something is less than or equal to or is to use the caret, uh, the less than signal, and then the equals. Uh, in order, and we can see that 3 is not less than equal to, so we have a false output. So we will be talking about uh, these comparisons when we do the conditional video, but this is a quick introduction to explain what a Boolean is and then what comparators are. So a couple of other things to be aware of with working with numerical ints and floats is something called casting, and I'll write that, not costing, but casting. And so we've talked a little bit about this before. So if I have a, a string variable, and let's just call the string variable num1, and let's say that num1 is equal to the string, notice I put it in single quotes here, of 100, and num2 is equal to the string of 200. And we were to say print num1 plus num2, What's the expected outcome? Uh, does anybody got a guess? It's 100 concatenated to 200. Now we can cast num1 and num2 into ints by saying num1 equal int of num1. So take a sign to the variable num1, the int of num1, which in this case is a, is a string. And let's do that for num2 equal int num2 and now when we run the print statement it will give us an output of 300 so that shows you how to cast an integer into uh, a string into an integer so that you can output it on a print statement okay so that's a that's an introduction into working with integers and floats within python we covered that in just a few minutes and i think it's a good background a good background information that will help you in we're just building our skills to be able to do more complex things with, uh, with Python until the next session.